Hello everyone! If you've ever found it difficult to find the right charging cable for your TI-84 Plus CE, you'll be thrilled to know you can finally put some modern hardware inside your 90s hardware calculator. Wireless charging! This project will be a breeze for anyone with soldering skills, but those soldering skills may not be required since I'll provide some alternatives. Real quick, Texas Instruments is releasing their new operating system version 5.5.1 without support for assembly, which means many games and utilities will no longer work on your calculator. Click the card above for more details and what you can do about it. Back to the tutorial. I need to state some warnings first. First, this tutorial assumes you already know how to solder components and are familiar with operating a multimeter. Second, this will require cutting a bit of plastic shell in order to fit everything. You only need to cut off a little bit, and it won't affect the structural integrity at all. Third, this will not work with the slide case on the back. Fourth, this modification will disable the ability to charge from a charging station. This shouldn't be an issue unless you're modifying a school calculator. I shouldn't need to say this, but don't modify school property. Fortunately, charging from the USB port and all data communication will function normally. Enough warnings, here's what you'll need. A calculator? My calculator is a newer one called a Revision M, so yours may look a bit different. No worries though, I've done this to my other, older calculator already, and the steps are nearly identical. You'll also need a wireless charger, and a wireless charging receiver. Although other receivers will probably work, I went with this Nilkin Qi receiver with the micro USB end pointing up, because it was a good, small size, showed large strips for soldering on, and was only $13. I'll put a link to it in the description. Next you'll need some scissors, wire clippers, an X-Acto knife, a pencil, preferably one with an eraser. I mean, a sharpened pencil with an eraser. Anyways, I'll be using enameled wire, although spare wire you have lying around might work as well, just as long as you're conscious about clearance space within the calculator. To open up the calculator, you'll need a Torx T6 and a Phillips head screwdriver. To prevent anything shorting on the inside, I'll be using Kapton tape, however electrical tape will do just fine. For testing, you'll want a voltmeter or a multimeter, but if you don't have either, a simple LED can substitute. Lastly, a soldering station, although conductive glue may work as a substitute. Once you have the receiver, you'll want to test that it works before you cut it up. Just find any device that charges with that connector, plug it in, and put it on your wireless charger. It should immediately start charging. If not, try another device. If it keeps failing, return it for a new one. Although both of mine worked without issue, it's always a good idea to be sure everything functions first before it's too late. If it works right off the bat, then you can get to the fun part, building. First, you'll need to cut off the end of the receiver. What we're doing is exposing the power leads so we can hijack them and direct their power elsewhere. Next, you'll need to be sure the back side is facing up. Then take the X-Acto knife and cut the casing about half a centimeter back. I cut mine a bit short, but I'll fix that before I solder. For this particular receiver, you'll notice a hard black coating. You'll need to scrape that away to expose what's underneath. Once all the hard coating is gone, you may need to scrape a bit more off. Although it may look like there's copper there, that light coloring is actually another coating on top of the copper, and you'll need to scrape that off. You can see the difference between the light coloring and the copper when I put it underneath my microscope. It doesn't need to be perfectly clean, but just know you may need to scrape off more later. Next, it's time to make sure you clean the contacts off well enough. Lie the receiver on your charger, then take your multimeter probes and put one on each contact. If there's no reading, or you get under 5 volts, clean off the contacts a bit more and try again. Once you get a reading, be sure to notate which contact is positive and which is negative. This will be very important later. For those without a multimeter, you can just take an LED and touch the leads to the contacts of the wireless charger. If the LED doesn't turn on, turn it around and try again. When it lights up, that means it's working. Be sure to notate which contact is positive and which is negative. Remember, the short lead or the flat side of the LED is the negative end. Now it's time to be sure it all fits. In order to do that, we need to take the calculator apart. Take the Phillips head screwdriver and remove the battery. Then unscrew the two screws hidden underneath the battery. Now take the Torx T6 screwdriver and unscrew these six screws. Once they're all removed, you can work on splitting the shell apart, which is held together by plastic snaps. 
The LCD area is easiest to separate, but it quickly gets difficult towards the middle. You'll need to use a lot of force to separate the middle. Once it's all open, wow, that's a lot of foil. At least for me. Some of you may have significantly less foil. It's not necessary for the calculator to function, and it's just electrical shielding. Place the top edge of the receiver at the top of the foil, and measure how much wire you'll need. For me, I'll need about 4 inches of enameled wire. If you're using thicker wire, you may want to use a few more inches to account for running the wire to 10 buck too because of clearance issues. Alright, if you tried to close up everything right now, it wouldn't fit because there's too much plastic sticking out of the back shell. There's three main parts you need to cut down. This area that surrounds an empty rectangle, a long strip here, and a little plastic rod poking out of the PCB. If you're using thicker wire, you may need to cut out a bit more. Once you're done, you can fit the receiver in and be sure it closes up correctly. Now it's soldering time. Grab the wire you just cut. If you're using enameled wire, be sure to scrape off the coating at the tips. If you're not using enameled wire, cut off the rubber coating with wire strippers. I have to stress you cannot use bare wire with this project. It will short things out and damage the calculator. You must use wire that has a coating on it of some sort. It's time to test it again. If you have a multimeter, be sure there's absurdly high resistance between the contacts. If there's low resistance, that means your solder is touching somewhere and you'll need to fix it to prevent damaging the components. If that's all good, you can put the receiver back on the charger and test that there's 5 volts getting through the wire. You can also use the LED in this test. Be sure to double check you labeled your polarity correctly. When the wire is attached correctly, take your Kapton tape or electrical tape and wrap up the contacts nicely so they won't short out and damage your calculator. Next, you get the solder the other ends of the wire to the calculator. In order to get the polarity correct, find where it says VC Bay minus and VC Bay plus. This is where you will solder the negative leads and the positive leads respectively. Once you've soldered the wire on, you get to do your first big test. See if the calculator charges. Take the receiver and put it on the wireless charging. The calculator's charging LED should turn on green within a second. If there's no light for more than 2 seconds, check that the polarity is correct and that it's actually getting 5 volts. If no issues appear, then the project is nearly complete. Tape up the contacts with Kapton or electrical tape so nothing gets damaged if the calculator's ever put in a charging station. Now simply put the back shell on, screw in the screws, put the battery back in, and you're done! The calculator will function just as before, and there's no way of knowing that you modified it until you put it on a wireless charger. So there you go. You can forget the USB port ever existed if all you need to do is charge it. The wireless sweep spot is right behind the LCD, which can tilt the calculator at a nice angle if you need to use it at the same time as charging it. This is probably my favorite mod I've done to my calculator due to its effectiveness, simplicity, and how unnoticeable it is unless you want to show it off. I hope you enjoy your wireless charging calculator. Be sure to look into TI removing assembly programming. Have a good day.